Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Catherine McCarthy's Immortelle. But first, a word from our sponsor. It's weird. It's queer. It's horrifying. It's Eric Raglan's debut horror collection, Nightmare Yearnings. Eric LaRocca, author of Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, calls the collection a precious gift that will beguile mystify, and astound even the most discerning reader of weird fiction. Within this book are stories of monstrous landlords, terrifying gender reveal parties, and cannibal cooking TV shows. Nightmare Yearnings comes out in ebook and paperback on September 4th. Order on Amazon or, better yet, from the author himself. You can find Eric Raglan on Twitter at Eric Raglan1992. Many thanks to Eric Raglan for sponsoring this video. Now on with the review. Okay, so uh, I want to preface this review by saying it's going to be a negative review. Um, so if the author is watching, maybe don't. Um, I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but I will try to be as nice as possible. I have interacted with Catherine on Twitter. We're not friends, not really even acquaintances. Uh, sometimes she pops up in my feed, um, and she has commented on my stuff. In fact, she, uh, said, I hope you enjoy my little gothic horror story, uh, when I mentioned I was reading it. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. Um, like I said, I'm going to try and be as nice as possible, but there are some things that really got on my nerves, um, and I will explain them now. So the very first thing I want to say is this review, like all of my reviews, is completely subjective, and I want to start with the biggest subjective note, which is I don't like gothic fiction. Um, I don't like... Uh, I, I don't know, the, the Haunting of Hill House, um, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, um, The Taming of the Shrew, even recently Mexican Gothic, none of those stories worked for me, and I think that's because I just don't like that type of story. Um, so yes, this review is going to be super, super subjective. Um, there were some things in the writing that uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit nitpicky about. Uh, there was a lot of rhyming going on. I don't know if it was intentional, but I marked at least 10 lines that rhymed um, where, you know, two words spaced, you know, equally apart, uh, sounded like each other, and it got distracting. I don't know if that was on purpose. I've never read a novel like that, um, and I, I don't know. There's something about that that irks me. Um, and that it, that added to my dislike of the the reading. <clears throat> now I'm going to discuss bits of the plot. I'm going to try and keep spoilers out of this, but it is er, it is apparent very very early on who the killer is. There are no twists or turns or anything like that. Um, it you know who it is right off the bat. It can only be one person, and it is that person. Um, that might be a spoiler. I apologize if it is. Um, but also there were there were inconsistencies in the writing, and I've mentioned that before. Um, and I think one of the, one of the ones that really really got me was uh, the uh, use of contractions. Um, for the majority, because this book is written in an antiquated prose, it is written like it, you know, was written in the time period. Um, there's, uh, they, they're not too many, for the most part, there are not, there aren't too many, uh, contractions. Like, is that I do not think it is this, you know, th that kind of thing. I have not, instead of haven't, don't, it's. But then every now and again, you'll find haven't, don't, and it's. They are very, very few and far between. Um, I, I don't know. It, like, at this point, I wasn't enjoying the read. Um, I was reading it out loud to my wife, so I started becoming nitpicky. Um, we were constantly saying, you know, get on with it, get on with it. Um, and I think a, a big part of that was is I didn't believe in this woman's grief. The story is about uh, a woman who loses her child to a killer, um, and she spends the rest of the book trying to figure out the killer, and then the last 10 pages or so is an info dump 
that kind of breaks the rules of the book. We'll get to that in a second. But I did not feel the grief in this story. I did not feel bad for Eleanor. Um, I like the character of Rowena, but she's there for so short a time that, you know, I, 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 I know that things had to happen to progress the plot. But when your favorite character in the book is gone very early on in the book, you kind of lose interest. And that's what I did. Now, as far as... I, I, I feel like I'm tearing this book apart, and I really don't want to. I didn't want to do this review at all, but several of you asked me to do the review um, because I was reading it. Um, I am going to recommend it for to everyone who likes The Haunting of Hill House, Taming of the Shrew, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, especially books, re recent books like Mexican Gothic. Um, I think you guys would, would enjoy it. Um, so that's what I'm going to base my review off of, is my own subjective opinion. Um, because I do not like those other books, and I do not like this book for the same reason, then, you know, go maybe read it if you love those other books. Another thing I want to add is almost to the point of comedy everything that this woman talks about the character eleanor everything she talks about that isn't human is anthropomorphized like the the i i don't know it it, it got it got silly after a while and i'm not trying to be rude but it it did you know the 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 character would look at uh, a flower and say uh they had finally come out of their shell because the hurricane, um, the worried about hurricane force winds or whatever, she would apply her own thoughts. She would anthropomorphize things like flowers, like walls, like the moon, the stars, any number of things. It felt like every single time she mentioned something, she was giving it life. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I don't, I, I, I never have been. Um, it's just something that, it, and especially since it's used so often in this one, it came off a bit comedic. I would like to end this review by saying I have the utmost respect for Catherine McCarthy. Um, there really is nothing wrong with the book um, that isn't subjective. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I, I want to state that Catherine McCarthy does have talent for words. It's just not. I'm not a fan of her style. Uh, would I read future works? Possibly, if they're not gothic literature. Um, because like I said, it's, it's just not working for me. And I think I'm going to stay away from it from now on. There's been so few books that I have, that I've read, that were gothic horror. Um, and this seems to focus more on, I don't know, it, it, and it, I should love it, but it's like more on atmosphere but the atmosphere here was missing for me. Um, but even when the atmosphere works in a gothic story, I tend not to like it either. And I'm a huge fan of atmosphere, so I don't know what's going on here. Um, but I read it out loud to my wife. My wife did not like it either. Um, in fact, she said several several times, just get to the point. Um, and now I need to talk about one spoiler that was a, it's, it's a massive spoiler. I'm going to be talking about the end of the book and the rules that, the rules that the book sets up that don't make any sense. So in three, two, one, spoilers. Okay, so throughout the entire book, none of the ghosts speak to Eleanor. None of them say a single word. The only time that we hear, and this is a problem I'll get to in just a second, um, the only time we hear of a ghost talking is when um, Mangu talks to Rowena about there's something bad coming. Um, now, the first thing I want to note there is Mangu had been dead for a while. And Rowena was able to talk to her. That's a problem because at the last bit of the book, unless I read something completely wrong, at the last bit of the book, it's mentioned that uh, Carrie's, uh, one of the dead girls that the, uh, the Father Kendrick killed after Rowena, it is, she gives this in massive info dump. Um, talking after she's already died. And she says that she, she only has an allotted time. What are the rules for the time frame um, with these ghosts? Because if Mongu was able to come and talk to Rowena, why in the world, at so long after her death, why in the world was Carrie's in such a rush? Also, Carrie's was in a rush, but she comes back three, four times to tell her story. And the entire time that we're sitting there, that I'm reading to my wife, 
um, this massive info dump. It's 10 pages long. It's literally monologuing, um, but not from the villain. It's from the victim. And Carrie's is telling her whole story. Uh, and it just goes on and on and on with so much unneeded information. Or at least at this point in time, it fe felt like unneeded information because we were tired of reading about it. Um, and But... There, there, there are issues. Why was she able to talk so much? Why didn't any of the other ghosts talk? Because we could have found out what happened with the boat captain. We could have found out so many different things, and we don't get any of that. But all of a sudden, this talkative ghost comes in and carry, named Carrie's, and she's talking for the next 10 pages. And then we get to the final page, and it just wraps up so quickly. Another inconsistency with the writing is the first two-thirds of the book are very, very verbose, um, very, very thick-languaged. Thick um, but later on, toward the end, it felt like Catherine got tired of writing the story and got went to a short, choppy sentences. There was one paragraph that I read that each, after like the first two sentences, each other sentence had exactly like three or four words in it, very short, boom, 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 boom. I might have liked the book more had the book been written like that to begin with, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, I think it was just a story overall I didn't like, but uh, to have that that rush there at the end with a monologuing for 10 pages is just the height of boredom, and I didn't like anything about it. Um, but have you read Immortel by Catherine McCarthy? I would love to hear why you liked it, um, if you didn't like it, any of those things, but let me know why you didn't like it or why you loved it um, so that we can have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo. Again, I'm sorry, this is the first miss uh, for me uh, from Off Limits Press. I got the book for uh, free for review, um, but they can't all be winners. I think I want to stick on that. I, yeah, in no way am I saying I'm never going to read Catherine McCarthy or an Off Limits Press book again. Just that this one this one especially didn't work for me. Um, but if you've read it, please tell me what you thought of it down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.